feel like Alfred Hitchcock sitting here the more I think about it. Well, this is a phase of my program that uh, means an awful lot to me because kind of a lot of my career was based on the idea of tuning in on the thoughts of my studio audience who I'm going to ask. Now, I got to ask something. A fellow in the front row, is that my paperback book there, young man? Huh? Let me come out there for a moment. Here goes the cast. They're going to go crazy. Where'd you get that from? Uh, uh, Eaton's. Eaton's? Yeah. That, that's a store in town? My God, this is a plug, folks. Not, someone else, sorry to raise their hand. Does someone else have the paperback, too? Hardbound, stand up. You're my friend. <laughs> my God, how are you? Oh, I don't believe... That's Johnny... This is not for sale anymore, so it's not a plug. You know, that's Johnny Carson between two chairs. My God. And nothing was under him. In fact, I had Beth Midler sit on him. That was fascinating. <laughs> Let's get back to the audience readings before my crew goes out of their mind there, huh? Gee, what a good... Listen, folks, since I haven't... The control room now has taken probably, say, Kreskin's flipped his little... I couldn't avoid that. I, uh, since I haven't met you before and since, you know, nothing has been collected in any way, I don't know where you're located. Now, do me a favor. As I receive your thoughts, I'll jot down my impressions on this folio or pad. You stand up if it rings a bell in your mind. Who in the audience is concentrating his or her thoughts? This came to me almost immediately. Something about a black cat... They were reading something about a black cat just recently. Would you stand, please? Let's ring a bell in some... Something about a... Was someone reading Edgar Allan Poe's Black Cat? Gal right there. You weren't even thinking about this at this moment, were you, no. ma'am? Uh, how recently were you reading it? About two weeks ago. Two weeks ago. Uh, this is, it's an old book. You didn't get out of the library, did you? No, I bought it. You bought it. Well, thank you very much for standing, ma'am. Really appreciate it. Thank you. As I'm talking to you... Thank you, folks. I got the impression of February. There's someone concentrating his or her thoughts on February, February the 26th. Were you here in, in the room? Would you kindly stand in our audience, please? Does, does that ring about anyone's mind? February 26th. Stand up, please. No one. We'll go on for there for my next miracle. <laughs> I receive a series of digits, 263. Would that lady or gentleman kindly stand who may have that? Is that a phone number of some kind, or am I close? Would you stand up very quickly? What is 263? Is that part of a phone number, yes, sir? Yes, it is. It's uh, is it your phone number? Yes. How many more digits? Uh, four. So I've given you, what, the exchange? Uh, yes, the first part of it. By the way, as I'm talking to you, does February the 26th ring any bell no, to you? No, none at all. Uh, <laughs> you say there are four digits. Yes. I only get three. Could that mean the two of them are the same? Uh, yes or no? Yeah, there would be two. Two are the same. Next digit is a two? Uh, yes. Then a nine? Right. Last two are fives? Right. Thank you very, very much for standing. Thank you. Thank you. I received the impression someone is... Oh, my gosh. And it's one of... Of course, it's one of my favorite years, uh, days of the year. But there is someone thinking October the 31st. Does this ring a bell in someone's mind? Would you kindly stand, please, if it does? October the... Stand up, please. The only way I can tell if you're standing. What does that mean to you, please? Uh, the only thing it means to me is that uh, Houdini died on that day. Oh, Houdini died on that... Don't tell me you've got... <clears throat> did you take the cover off another copy? We got a... a this is a plug. <laughs> I don't know you folks, do I? Would the digits C... Would the letter C18 ring a bell in your mind? C, um, yes. We just studied no. that bill in history. Billing? It's billing. a government bill. What kind of a bill? Government. A government bill is called C-18, or are there more digits to it? It's just C-18. C-18. Is it going up for election or vote um, or what? No, it was uh, passed you, in 1972. Are you in the school? Yes. Whereabouts? Uh, Lord Elgin in Burlington. I don't know you, do I? No. You seem relieved of that fact. Don't say that. <laughs> Thank you very much, young man. Sit down. Thank you. Interesting. There's someone here in the audience who... Uh, I can only describe this. It seems like it's an accident involving a pair of scissors that took place a few days ago with a child or something. Would you kindly stand if this rings a bell? Seems like the child cut his arm or something. Would you stand, please? No one here in the audience. Would anyone be concentrating his or her thoughts on June the 3rd? Would you kindly stand? June the 3rd. Stand up, please. Is that a birth date, sir? Yes. Whose birth date? My daughter's. How many children do you have? Four. Are two of them girls? No. <laughs> How many are girls? One. Will the other three be boys? Very good. <laughs> <laughs> it may 
understanding, sir. Is another one of the children born the same month or not, sir? Yes. Which child? The second child, the first second boy. Child. What was the one, the, the one that, whose thought I got was the... The other was born on June the 22nd. Close or not? That's just about as That's close as you can get. That's just about as close as you can get. You seem stunned, sir. The one was born on October the 25th. The youngest. The youngest. The other one was not born the same month in October. That's correct. We've never met before, have we, sir? That's correct. I'll tell you, sir, I cannot get the month that the other, on which the other was born. It does not come to me, even though I can picture what you're... Th Wait a minute. I just have to ask you something. Was the other one born on the 22nd also of October, like uh, 22 again? No, but no? you're... I've got I'm the, close. Well, who was, who the, was 22nd born the 22nd of October is here beside me. 22nd of October. <laughs> and what does March 19th mean to you? You got it. That's the fourth one. Thank you very, very much. I appreciate it. to ask you something only because it, we're going a little bit over time but I keep I've been getting this I have written this down three times I wrote new then I wrote N-E-T-O-N Newton is that close does that ring a bell maybe it's not complete would you stand up please stand here in the audience if it rings a bell in your Newtonville am I close would you stand uh, ma'am is that a place I'm not familiar with yes, all, it is. Uh, is that a town in which you live I will be Oh, you're moving to Newtonville. Yes. Uh, you were wondering if I could give you a date you had in mind in October, too, didn't you? Yes, I did. We've never met before, have we? No. Would it be the 18th of October? Yes. What does that mean to you, please, then? That's birthday. Whose birthday? My nephew's. Your nephew's birthday. Who, what does October the 7th mean to you? It's my anniversary. Your anniversary. <laughs> now, do you have, a, you have the street picked out in Newtonville? Do you know where you will live? Yes or no? Do you, do you know where you're going to move to? Yes, Newtonville. Uh, how many digits to the address? Don't tell me the address, but how many numbers in all? You don't have a street number. I don't know. <laughs> all right. What does Front Street mean to you? That's where I work. That's where you work. How many digits to that address in all? Three. And I only get two, so it probably means the two of them are the same. Mm -hmm. We've never met before? No. You work on Front Street, 151? Right. Thank you very, very much, ma'am. We'll be back, back shortly after the following news. As a matter of fact, I kind of fell in love with her because she was the Georgie girl. Would you welcome Miss Lynn Redgrave? Huh? Reading. You know, I was watching that in the makeup room, yes. and you, you had a problem having somebody stand up over something. Yes. Well, yeah. What do you remember what it was? Something about a tele... 221 or something? No, it was, a, it was a date. It was a date. I, and what was the date? February 26th, and it was my daughter's birthday. Oh, my God. And I was sitting in the makeup room going, oh, my dear, oh, my dear. <laughs> Once on the Griffin show, the first show I ever did, a Merv Griffin series, he's seen late at night in this area, I kept mentioning something. No one ever acknowledged it. Never said anything. And I kept coming back to it, which maybe in my early days I should have realized either the person doesn't want to because it may be very personal mm -hmm. or I may be wrong. After the show, in those days, they did the show in a theater, a small theater in New York, that, and the control room was under the stage. Yeah. And the staff was thinking that thought. Isn't that wild? Oh. Listen, you know, with a, with a background and a family involved in the theater, I'm always fascinated with superstitions, and there are oh. a lot of them. Oh, there yeah. are a lot in the theater. There are um, things like don't whistle in the dressing room. I think that's Which probably because Her Henry Irving or somebody didn't like it. It was probably something sensible. But if you do whistle, there are many actors who make you go outside the room, turn around three times, knock, spit, do terrible things. Really? Then uh, you're not meant to have uh, real flowers on the stage. I never heard of that, Lane. You mean uh, to tell me in a set? On a set, when you see flowers. Now, that's probably a practical thing that, you know, in, in the winter, maybe you can't get the right sort of thing or something yes. like that. Or they cost a lot of money. Maybe some uh, superstitions come from practical sources. That means you know? mustn't have fish and chips in the, in the dressing room. Uh, <laughs> you're kidding I me. Think I, again, it was, I think, again, it was probably because some famous actor didn't like the smell of vin the vinegar that you pour on, you know. Or left it or, there for two uh, days and it was the smell it. Something like that. <laughs> but the worst, <laughs> the worst ones are... Concern. Now, when um, 
uh, our producer here, Monty Morgan, said to me, uh, uh, asked me about uh, superstition back in the dressing room there. I started to say, you must never mention the Scottish play. And he said, what Scottish play? And then I realized I wasn't in a theater, so it was okay to say Macbeth. I don't know. You don't, you mustn't say, you mustn't say the name Macbeth. You mustn't quote a line from it, particularly not quote a line. Or you always talk about the Scottish play or when so-and-so was playing the Scottish king. You never say it. And I think that, um, I asked my father about this one time. He's played in Macbeth. Michael Redgrave. Yes. And he played some years ago in New York, had a very bad accident concerning some lift shaft, elevator shaft, where he broke his ankle. There were nearly always in a production of Macbeth there was some accident or other, which a lot of people put down to the fact that there are battle scenes and swords, so somebody's going to get there hurt. there have been a lot of actions but associated what, with But uh, he says he believes that because the three witches in Macbeth conjure up mm -hmm. evil spirits. spirits, they conjure up evil, and all the things that they say are based on old, old, old uh, rhymes that were considered, you know, the real thing. They're not just something Shakespeare thought up. Curses they're they're based on the conjuring up of, of evil. And so my father thinks that if you, with enough conviction, which when you're acting in a play, you usually have yes. great conviction, you conjure up evil, something's going to happen. That's and uh, people, that's the one thing. You know, the other things people take fairly lightly. You, you know, if you whistle off. well, you know, it's not the end of the world. But that is something I've known people get... I mean, really, I see with fear about it. Now, Lynn, you've got to go out and do all sorts of antidotes and things out in the corridor. With, uh, you know? In other words, if, what if you were doing kind of an impromptu or a, a play in which there's improvisation? You would not, you would no, not say that, that, especially no. if there oh, was no. a, a, a classic stage actor involved or actress. Particularly, don't you shouldn't say it. If it was part of a play, there wouldn't then be anything you could no do problem. about it. Yes. But if, it was, if you're in the dressing room, and quite often you know, you're telling stories or you're backstage somewhere or you're in... In a theater, any place, and somebody mm -hmm. says, do you remember when, uh, and you named famous actor, and when he got to the speech, that begins. Well, you just never say the lines. You'll say the speech about the dagger, or you'll say the speech about the future, or the oh, soliloquy God. about, or when the queen said, but you'll never say the words. You know, you said something about becoming so intense in a play that, of course, you, you, you give your full physical and mental force you you told me once that you become you take on the characters you don't make it a, a stylized one as a Cary Grant would you become that character try to yes sometimes with more success than others one has to say but does try it, to. does that I'm curious Lynn I've never asked this of anybody except when I was studying psychology in, in laboratories and that had to do with a whole different situation does it ever confuse your life experiences or your memories I think the the deeper and the darker the play is and by that I mean if it's either a serious play or heading towards either tragedy mm -hmm. or something very, 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 very serious or very, very, uh, you know, deep. Mm -hmm. uh, it hangs over you much longer. It's, it does it's hang over It's impossible to wake in the morning and say, no, you're going to do, um, uh, well, uh, I know one particular case. I was in Breath's Mother Courage playing the dumb daughter, and it's a particularly harrowing and tragic play. And you can't wake in the morning and live your day just any old way because come the evening you'll think about it you wake up in the morning kind of with this great cloud weighing over you even though it was a wonderful part and a play i liked to be in because it was a, a wonderful thing to be in oui. but if it's uh, noel coward's hay fever you'd it's yeah, uh, yeah. you'd know at the end of the day you've got this yeah, lovely that's... party you're going to yes. and it takes as much skill sometimes more to play yes. something like that but it it doesn't weigh on you the character you're playing there it, it there's less depth to it, perhaps. We were talking about a uh, horror movie that we both saw at mm. different times that we thought was better than The Exorcist. That was oh, the, the Omen. Omen. And the thing that... Any of you in the audience see The Omen? Very scary. The thing that was scary was that the, 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 it was made... It was constructed so convincingly. <sighs> and to have a child who, unlike... The Exorcist was gory, let's face it. In a lot of ways, it, I think it was tasteless. But this kid, he was only six years old, that acted that role. I know. He had a hidden, hidden ominousness about yeah. it. We'll be back... Know. After the He's following commercial, six. <laughs> six years long. Lynn, we could talk all, all evening mm -hmm. on the theater. Yeah. You are a very fascinating person. Thank you. And, I, and a very nice interesting being human being. Listen, I brought up a gentleman up from the audience. Your name is Graham. Graham Taylor. Taylor, we don't know each other. No, do we've we? never met. You got to meet uh, our lovely guest Hello. here, Hello. huh? Nice Lynn? Nice Graham, you. nice to see you. Uh, now, Lynn Redgrave and Graham. This is an experiment. Well, there's something that fascinates me about the power. We were talking about omens, the movie The Omen, mm -hmm. and superstition, which mm -hmm. really can make people so uptight that they can react violently because they believe something that's yeah. negative. They can almost make a, a superstition come true. Yes. Now, this is an experiment. It's not to prove anything. Then we have here cigarette 
type paper, you know, that they make mm -hmm. their own cigarettes with. Today, you got to be careful in handling this. They're wondering what you're smoking. <laughs> Would you take out one of them, please? You kind of slide them out. I just want, want you to kind of get used to it. And yes. that's exactly like what that. they are. Now, when, Lynn, in a little while, you fold the paper, you kind of roll it like this between your fingers. Mm -hmm. You can almost do it in that way. And uh, almost a close-up will show exactly what's happening, which is good. And that's about, although you can make it as small as possible. Mm -hmm. Now, we'll get rid of this one. God, Lynn, that was interesting. Now, Lynn, I'd like you to take three of them out. Three? You can take four or five, if you will. In fact, just pile them on the table. I just want you to take them out rather haphazardly, if you will. And place them on the table as soon as you have any number of them. Just drop them there. Well, how many do we have? I'd rather not ha handle them now, but there's about five. Five. Just to emphasize that they're not specially prepared or what have you. Now, Lynn, you can use this as a writing board. Take one. Take the pen here. You can take this as kind of, I think, makeup type pen. Mm -hmm. So you can take the top off of it, if you will. Yeah. I want you, if you will, to lay one of them down here and write, print on it the word burn. I don't even think we're going to need this, this stool. Just write on it the word burn, if you will. Fine. Mm -hmm. Now, Lynn, fold it up so that it's kind of, and to, to very tight. Don't even fold it. Roll like it. Did. Roll it very tiny. That's right. We can do the same, we can do that, and you can just set it aside. Now, Lynn, if you will, take another one and write, don't burn on it. We can get a close-up on that, I think. And we should really leave them inside the bowl so that they're... And write the word burn kind of large, if you will. Is that large enough? That's good. Now, fold that up, if you will, the same way. My concern is, because it's makeup, it may show through the paper, and I really don't want that to be the case. Mm -hmm. Fine. Now, would you do another one, please? Mm-hmm. And right on that, don't burn as well. We actually will not need any, any other pencil. I think that's working pretty well as far as the effect is concerned. Now, what is important, folks, in reconstructing this experiment, uh, don't burn as well. As well. <laughs> My gosh. You know, that was grammar, great. Right. No, no, but it's one of the most clever ad libs in this test I've ever That's gotten through. <laughs> all right, fold that. Oh, you didn't want That's all right. Fold I thought, that. what no, terrible no. grammar. He should have right. read also, but I wasn't going to criticize Fold that up. <laughs> and toss that in as well. I said, as well, come to think of it, and throw that in. As a matter of fact, Lynn, without my handling, would you try to make them uniform in size? We'll oh, bring, bring the ashtray mm -hmm. closer to you, if you will. I'm going to ask, your first name is? Graham. Graham, would you take the other two slips and kind of throw them on the floor so everything is out of the way? Mm -hmm. Now, we must realize this, folks, that she took one out and we tossed it aside out of this pack of what says here 100 leaves. She took four or five more slips out, two of which she threw away. She could have written burn on any one of them. The reason I had her do it in this way is I wanted to emphasize that not one of the sheets was prepared. This truly is a pack of uh, roll-your-own type cigarettes. Now, I asked Graham to come forward because you smoke, and Lynn, I, I don't believe you smoke. No. I'm not sure. All right. I'm going to ask you, sir, to light your cigarette because of the need for some kind of heat within this test. Now, we're doing that, Lynn, because a match itself, I think, would be very difficult to resist as far as paper is concerned. I mean, a burning match, even if you let the bottom of it, if the flame were going upwards, you can light your, your cigarette now, and the bottom touch the paper, there's a great likelihood the flame would reach around and burn that. But a cigarette tip, while it is intensely hot, will still not be as devastating as a burning flame. Now, Lynn, I'm gonna turn my back to you. I want you to put your hand over the ashtray and just mix, shake up and mm -hmm. down the three so that they're in a haphazard order. If you think is that one might be, you might have left one more open than the others, or you want to change the shape of some of them because we don't all we don't roll things up exactly uniform. You can do that, mm -hmm. but tell me when you've done so and you've taken your hand off all right, my hand of is the off. ash. They are there. They're all there. Now I'm going to turn my back again, but before I do this, so that I do not influence her, take the ashtray, place it over here, Lynn. Mm -hmm. I want you, when I turn my back, in any order, to place the three cigarette papers side by side on this black wood where our camera and our audience here can see very vividly. I'll turn my back, place them in any order you wish, please, Lynn. Yep, done. Now, one more touch. Change the order once or twice of any one of the slips or, or more of them, if you will. Two or three, it doesn't matter. Okay. Well, I don't want to turn around until you finish touching them. Finished. All right. Lynn, before we go any further, and I think we can stress this, we prearrange nothing. No, nope, nothing. Watch. Sir, with your cigarette, start here and touch each of the papers. 
Touch the next. Touch the next. Lynn, I want you to open the other two slips of paper. Our time is going by so rapidly, and yet she clearly put, don't burn. Would you open this one, too? We can save some time. Just set it down. This says, don't burn as well. Don't burn as well. That was my bad writing. And, Graham, you're opening that one. Give that to Lynn so that she can finish opening that. My hope was that the one that reacted was the one she had written, burn <laughs> on. Oh, and my goodness. Show it to our camera. Don't burn. Don't burn, and don't burn as well. Wild That's something. That's something. That's something. I you know, folks, we have been told, we have been told that nothing can be either created nor destroyed. Physics tells us that. But if that's true, folks, I wonder, what about a fleeting personal thought? which we all have and is then gone. I wonder. I'll see you next week. Be the good Lord willing. Goodbye. And thank you, Lynn. Hey, come on out here, Graham. We'll show you the audience here.